bread. Fluffy, chewy, crispy, delicious bread. A gift from the gods. I'm not sure exactly when my love of bread began. As a kid, my parents would buy a big loaf of freshly baked bread at the local farmer's market. We'd sit watching a concert at the park and my sisters and I would tear big fluffy bits off. And that was dinner. But for the most part, classic American sliced bread was the norm. An invention overrated as one of the best in my opinion. Let's fast forward to college. Most of it was pinching pennies with the cash I had on hand and surviving on soup and free crackers at the cafeteria while thousands in loans stacked up out of sight and out of mind. I did have the opportunity of a lifetime to live in Germany for one semester. While hopping from one country to the next, I seemed to notice a local bakery around every corner with delicious smells spilling out onto the cobblestones. Buying your daily loaf of bread from your local baker was just part of life. Is this truly what life is like in other parts of the world or just some fantasy I have growing up in California? This is true actually. The bakery is a very important part of the culture here. A roommate once peeled open a pungent Tupperware of sourdough starter a foreign substance I had no understanding of. But it planted yet another seed of interest in how bread is made, and the possibility of actually making your own delicious bread was turning into a reality. Over a decade has passed by, and over time my interest in food has only grown. About one year ago, I tested out my first loaf of sourdough bread. And fast forward to this year and dozens of bakes later, I'm setting a goal of baking 30 loaves of bread in the next 30 days. How did I get here? Why do I envision myself opening up a European style bakery at some point in my life? Maybe in the distant or not so distant future. Let's back up for one second and talk about why sourdough. 2020 led to an explosion of sourdough bakers and attempter bakers. Many people have latched on to the slow food movement, a movement back to our roots, understanding the importance of what we eat, turning back the clock of automation and machines and wanting to work with our hands. And to me, baking bread represents almost the opposite of what I do on a day-to-day -day basis for my job or my career. It's the antithesis of what I've built my career on. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm an online teacher. I create online courses taken by millions of people around the world. They're everlasting, made with complicated technology, able to be taken over and over and over again. Sourdough bread, made by hand, flour, salt, water, that's it shared with one's family and friends, a fresh loaf. There you go. You're lucky if it lasts a couple of days. Is it yummy? And for me, it's just the kind of hobby that I needed to balance out all the technology, the digitalness of our lives right now. And so I've been practicing for about a year. Why did some turn out like this? Others turned out like this. And this all leads to this video. The first in what I'm hoping is going to be a series where I combine my passion for filmmaking with my passion for food. Now, let me be completely clear. I am absolutely not an expert in food at all. So my goal is to document the process, the journey as I try to understand the process of making different kinds of food and hopefully improve my skills too and maybe yours. All right, let's do it. So that we can get on the same page, let's start with the basic process of making sourdough bread. Flour, salt, water, that's it. Sounds simple, right? 
broken down, each step of making sourdough bread is pretty basic. But when you're just getting started and you're just looking into this, diving into the blogs, listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos, all together, it, it is quite daunting and it's kind of confusing. There's terms that I still don't know the full understanding of. And if you're just getting started, I think it is confusing. And the biggest hurdle in my mind comes right at the beginning with the sourdough starter. Sourdough starter is a live culture of water and flour that becomes a breeding ground for natural yeast in our environment. It's what makes our dough rise, what makes our bread fluffy and airy with countless little pockets. And it also gives each different type of sourdough bread a different flavor. My first attempt at making sourdough starter was actually a few years ago, and it ended up in the trash can when after a week or so of trying to feed it, trying to get, get it started, I thought that the vomit smell coming from this jar was a bad thing. Little did I know, I was almost there. Which was actually really funny. During my second attempt, I kept at it, continuing to feed my new pet, even when the entire kitchen started to smell like a sweaty locker room. Another benefit of sourdough is that it's a lot easier to digest for people who have a difficulty with gluten. Sometimes sourdough bread or naturally leavened bread is easier for them to digest. Whatever it takes to allow us to eat more bread, right? Beyond the starter, making sourdough bread is a simple series of steps. Mixing your ingredients, folding the bread to build up gluten and get air into the dough, which results in a bigger rise and more open inside of your bread, known as the crumb. Wait more, you fold again, repeat, repeat, repeat. After it rises a bit, you shape your dough, shape it again into a loaf like ball, place it into a basket to help hold its shape, let it proof, more time waiting until baking time. Baking it, putting it in the oven is always the most exciting part for me. Up until now, I don't really know how my bread's going to turn out. Sometimes it poofs up super big, called the oven spring. Sometimes it deflates and it ends up kind of flat. And that's something that throughout these 30 loaves, I'm hoping to improve on and have a better understanding of. You blast the oven to 500 degrees. For us at-home bakers, we place our dough in something like a Dutch oven, which traps any steam released from the dough and serves to create that deliciously golden crust. But not before attempting to make a fancy pattern by scoring the dough. This gives us some control over where the gas inside our loaf escapes as it is greeted by the high temperatures of our oven. Then you wait. You wait to see, did it rise, did it fall? What's in there? Good, huh? Finally, you can open that oven door, lift off the top of your Dutch oven, and there it is. Were the past 24 hours of prepping this bread worth it? Creating a work of art that not only feeds our stomachs, but also our souls. Or you didn't and there's more work to do, more things to understand, another attempt to make. To be honest, most of the bread that I've made tastes pretty good, and I don't think I'm bragging, I just think that anybody who attempts to bake sourdough bread, even if it ends up being flat or not have super open 
holes inside. I think it mostly tastes better than what you can get from your local store in terms of just sliced bread. One of the things I've heard listening to the sourdough podcast is that the sourdough community is so friendly. And this became apparent as soon as I started posting about this project, a former student of mine reached out because he was helping launch his very own online school for French cuisine based in Paris. He offered help if I needed any and I took him up on it. But the first question I asked him wasn't about the process of making bread, but it was about this vision, this fairy tale that we have of French families waking up in the morning to freshly baked bread that their papa picked up at the local bakery. Was this a reality or truly just a fairy tale? Out of all the, the image or the cliche we can think about France, it, this is the one that uh, that is true. Actually, we still go to the bakery. Uh, I vow for uh, that. Yeah, I vow for every that. day on, uh, <laughs> on the bakery is very important part of the of the the culture here. Okay, Isabel, that settles it. We're moving to France. Is it important to get better flour, or specific kinds of flour, and will that really make a big difference? What is important in the flour is the amount of gluten you will get in the... So what yeah, is important know. after is to, to calculate the temperature, mm -hmm. because what mm -hmm. you want at the end, when you finish your, your dough, you want a dough between 23 to 25 degrees uh, Celsius. What are the things that go into getting a more open crumb like that? Well, wheat, it will be difficult to have an open crumb. Merci oh, beaucoup. My takeaways. One, type of flour is important, especially if I want a more open crumb, which isn't necessarily the sign of a good baker. I need white bread flour because I've actually been using the same flour from a 50 pound bag that I was able to score at the beginning of the pandemic. Two, to get a more sour flavor, using a different starter is going to be the most important aspect. It just so happens that I had inspired my mom to try her hand at sourdough bread. She ordered a couple of different starters online to help get her starter started. Say that three times fast. And one of them is a more traditional San Francisco style sourdough bread. Three precise temperature matters in determining if a loaf is going to come out or not. Another tip that my online teacher friends told me is to use the finger dent test. If it slowly starts to spring back and maybe doesn't spring back all the way, but part way, that means it's proved well and bake well. This call was a kick in the butt to improve my craft. Better flour, check. Higher hydration, check. Four loaves ready for bed and now I know why bakers wear white. More time touching and feeling my dough. Check. Hopefully it'll stay around 78 to 80 degrees. Better folding. Check. Better shaping. Check. Better scoring. Check. And just like most things, when you practice enough, you do improve. And so my loaves started to get better. They started tasting better. The insides started being more open. Bake number two, it looks pretty good on the outside. It does have some nice air pockets in there. I'm excited about that one. <laughs> two loaves here that I'm putting to bed in the fridge. All white flour. Yeah, we'll see you in the morning. The moment of truth, what I always enjoy most. So let's see if we got an oven spring. Whoa, nice. Oh, are you so excited about that too? So fluffy. 
Wow. Yeah, we're gonna. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? And Isabel and I and the kids were eating a lot of bread. It would be impossible or improbable for us to eat all of those loaves of bread ourselves. So I had to gladly give it away. And ultimately, this is the best part of baking for me. Not only is feeding my own family something that brings me joy, but sharing it with friends and neighbors has been quite an amazing experience. <laughs> there you go. Thank you so much. Was I confident it tasted good enough to share? Not 100%, but I did figure it would taste better than the bread most people were eating. I'm entrusting you to deliver these. Aye, aye, Captain. You see, even though thousands of people have started baking their own sourdough bread, most people are getting their bread from a big box store with dozens of ingredients, shelf stable for weeks, if not months. Delivering bread via bike today. I asked my neighbors and friends to share a photo of the inside of my bread so that I can see what it looked like. And everyone seemed to really enjoy it. And in particular, one rave review came in. I have to read you a review of my bread. Oh, is this gonna make it in your documentary? <laughs> we'll see. I look terrible. <laughs> Honey, you're so beautiful. Excellent. Your bread reminds me of a sourdough I used to get from the bakery back when I used to live in San Francisco called Tartine. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a pretty good compliment. Good job, honey. <laughs> and I ultimately did reach my goal, 30 loaves in 30 days. I am driving over to Claremont, California, where they have a couple bakeries. I drove here yesterday. One of the restaurants was closed for the day. Well, that's a bummer. One didn't have any more sourdough loaves and one have closed down due to the pandemic. Oh my gosh. This is why baking my own sourdough bread is good, I guess. But today it's the crack of dawn and uh, I think I'll be able to grab a couple loaves, hopefully. Great. Okay, I'll get one of those. Um, that was a half failure because they don't have sourdough bread every day of the week. I think we're looking good. All right, so I got one loaf of sourdough and that place is awesome inside. And uh, I also picked up a croissant just because I want to learn how to make croissants too. Mine's like flatter for sure. Let's cut into them. Oh, you can even hear it. But they don't have a huge open crumb inside. I think my inside looks pretty good. Oh yeah, yours definitely has more holes. Taste this one first. This is an expert panel right here. Yeah, expert panel. Mama. That was the second one. Say that again? The second piece is more sour, for sure. That's what I thought too. The first piece was just like kind of very subtle. You like the um, crumbs? No, no. You like mine? Wait, was the second one? Which was the second one? Mine, the more sour one? Yeah, I like that one. <laughs> Honestly, I just feel like they're a little different. I think their crust is better though. There's room to grow, but my bread tastes pretty good. Yeah, you should have a bakery. What did I learn? I learned that I really do love baking bread. It's something that I definitely see myself continuing to do.
I am nowhere near being an expert. I think there's something that I lack in knowing what an actual bakery would look like. The process, the behind the scenes, the management, all of those things that to me don't sound that fun. For now, I imagine continuing to bake a loaf or two every week to feed my family and maybe share with my friends. I challenge myself not only to practice on my own, but to build connections with my community here locally as well as around the globe. Super excited because I sent a message to Mike, the creator of the Sourdough Podcast. As far as advice for starting your own cottage bakery, I would just say, you know, make sure you do, you're doing it for the love of baking. You know, I, you're, it's not going to be a huge money making scheme. So just make sure you're doing it for the right reasons that for, you know, the love of sharing bread, good bread with your neighbors and your community. That's awesome. So awesome. I love coming up with branding and thinking about businesses. And when I started getting into sourdough, I came up with a name for a potential future bakery. I even ordered a stamp off of Etsy, and that name is Copain, a French word for friend or boyfriend derived from the word companion, which is literally one who shares bread with you. And I think that's the perfect way to end this story. We need to break bread with more people. Hey everyone, I'm just putting the finishing touches on the video and I really hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this one. It's something, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, that I'm excited about kind of sharing my passions and being a little bit more creative with what I do as a filmmaker and video creator. Part of that is creating this new channel and I'm doing it completely from scratch. So if you enjoyed this video, I really hope you can hit that thumbs up button, share a comment, let me know what you think, and of course, most importantly, subscribe so that you can get all of my new videos. I already have a few ideas for videos in this series, but don't worry, not all of my videos are going to be about food or sourdough bread specifically. Actually, the next video I've already started filming and it's all about ramen, another type of food that I've been getting into lately. So that's going to come out in the next month or so. I also posted a Q&A video. Um, so if you want to learn a little bit more about me and where I'm at, what I do, I share it on social media, uh, an AMA Ask Me Anything post and I got a lot of questions. So I answered a bunch of those in a video that I'll link to in the description or just head over to the channel. So help me get to those first thousand subscribers on this channel and I can't wait to share more videos like this. And again, I hope this inspired you to make your own sourdough bread or go down some other 